In this class, we are going to have a look at the tragic and triumphant life of Kenji Mizuguchi, one of the three legendary figures in the annals of Japanese cinema, the other two being Yasujiro Ozu and Akira Kurosawa. Mizuguchi's life was not only short, he lived for only 58 summers, it was also scarred by several family tragedies. In his uh, youth, he suffered from serious physical ailments, the most serious being rheumatoid arthritis, which left him with uh, a gait that included a limp. He had, he suffered from a limp as a result of this attack of arthritis from which he suffered for one whole year. The family was poor and struggling. The father, as a result of financial difficulties, could be cruel. From a very young age, Mizuguchi noticed with sadness and a suppressed anger his father's ill treatment of his quiet suffering but strong mother. Theirs was a working class family. The father was a roofing con carpenter. He had difficulty providing two meals for the family. With the onset of, with the outbreak of Russo-Japanese war in the early years of the last century, he hit upon the idea of making quick money by starting a business providing raincoats to Japanese soldiers in battle. But with the abrupt end to the war, he, the business failed and he suffered added debts. In such a situation, the father took a critical decision which was to affect Misuguchi for the rest of his life, namely Suzu, Misuguchi's sister. They were a family of three, two brothers, younger two, Suzu. Suzu was sold into Geishdom, Geisha. That is, he was sold to, she was sold into prostitution. While the war, victory in war, sent the nation into raptures, a series of tragedies marked the life of the family and the sensitive Mizuguchi in particular. It has been said, and I quote, Mizuguchi's father's brutal treatment of his mother and sister produced a fierce resistance in him 
against his father throughout his life. The good-looking, accomplished and loving Suzu agreed to seal her own fate in order to save her parents and siblings from going down the drain. Mizuguchi's outlook on life and his social and individual philosophy, all this was significantly molded by his sister's sacrifice. So when he came to make films, it is understandable that Mizuguchi's female characters were shown as suffering, sad, but very strong women. Mizuguchi's women are in marked contrast to Ozu's men or to the samurai characters in Kurosawa's films. Ozu, for him, the middle class family, usually the middle class, this was the world and the site was the family home. All his dramas take place in or around the home and the characters are mostly commonplace. Kurosawa's samurai men are bigger than life, well built, tall, vain and arrogant. Mizuguchi opted for the suffering woman who, however, holds the family together, suffers, even dies, but ensures before leaving that the family is settled and well looked after. All these were reflections of what the man had gone through in his own life. When in his youth he took to bed, the remarkable sister Suzu used to come regularly to the family home to take care of her sick brother. Again, when the mother prematurely died in 1915, when Ozu was just 17, the sister took both the brothers with her to the Geisha district the brothel area to live with her. It is rare to see such sacrifice, such love. But while all this saddened Mizuguchi, it also ennobled him and provided him with insights into the working of society into the functioning of families and the heights to which women can rise, especially in times of adversity. Now, when we study the films of Mizoguchi, we must be, we must take interest in 
learning a little about what is known as shimpa dramas shimpa dramas in japanese society of the day grew around the love and concern that elderly geishas had for some of their younger patrons these were tentative love stories with no hopeful end in sight but love was there so if we see the, know something about the shimpa dramas the life of Su- suzu what suzu did for her brothers and then we study the films of mizuguchi we come to see a connection only here it is a geisha sister spending all her time much of her time money energy and reserves of love for her brothers in the shimpa dramas it is older geishas providing a love space to their usually good looking handsome young lovers in relation to this in this connection tadao sato the great japanese film critic and commentator has said the subject of women's suffering is fundamental in all mizuguchi's work while the sacrifice a sister makes for a brother makes a key showing in a number of his films now we will have to take note of the fact that the world of cinema took a lot of time in recognizing the genius of mizuguchi the artist and also initially failed to take into account the anguish the depth of anguish in the soul of the artist as a result of his tragic experiences but once the world came to know of his best films there was no end to the appreciation that kept pouring in from all corners of the globe the writer mark le fanu has observed thus about mizuguchi's films his films have an extraordinary force and purity they shake and move the viewer by the power refinement and compassion with which they confront human suffering talking of the purity and compassion that we find in mizuguchi's films the film that first comes to mind is ugetsu monogatari 1953 which won the silver lion at the venice film festival and drew the attention of the world to the genius of the master the film has since then figured unfailingly in the cinephiles list of all time classics he lived uh, for just 3 years after the venice award now let us have a look at ugetsu monogatari the f- this dark film which ends on a note of hope 
is set in a dark period in the history of medieval Japan. It was a time when the country was at the mercy of feuding warlords and the people suffered loot, rape and famine. Women were almost always along with the rice hoarded in village homes, the target of the attackers. In this film, we find a village potter, he is greedy to a fault and a village farmer, the two are neighbors and friends, go out in search of money and status out of the village, much against the wishes of their respective wives. ああ、<laughs> when after undergoing many a misadventure in the wider world, the two come back to the village, they are poorer than before, they are a disgraced duo. In their absence, the potter's wife has been killed, the farmer's wife has been raped, they return to a desolated village. But true to Mizuguchi's philosophy of life, they start life anew. The potter with the small boy that his wife has left behind and the childless farmer and his wife. They come together as if they are one family and the center of hope is the small child. <laughs> This 
This is Mizoguchi. He's himself suffering. He's seeing sufferings around him. And all these sufferings, he plows into his best films without making an overstatement. He, however, never fails to show the pot of love and hope at the end of the rainbow. Many of Mizuguchi's films are period pieces. Harking back often to the ravages of feudalism, his critiquing of feudal life in medieval Japan, however, has a certain philosophical note to it, a sense of mystery. There is beauty even whilst suffering is being shown. And then there is a redemption through suffering, through pain, through loss. As I've already stated, these have everything to do with his personal experiences. All great art is autobiographical. Only some, like the films by Mizuguchi, are greater because of the starkness of the, of the autobiographical element. Mizuguchi made several other very important films which are hailed the world over today as classics. Bansho the Bailiff, Story of Oharu, Osaka Elegy, Sisters of the Gion, Story of the Last Chrysanthemums. These are read as classics by cinephiles, estates, practitioners of cinema of the highest order. All of them, whenever they talk about these films, they never fail to give a big salute to the maker. I'll end with referring by referring to some films of Mizuguchi, which in Japan are referred to as Keiko Ega or tendency films. These films reveal the socialist tendencies of the maker. These films are very important and stand apart. There's a different genre from the period pieces that is the deal with the past. These, they deal with a slowly emerging present. Although recognition came late to Mizoguchi, it would be necessary, it is necessary to say that at home Kurosawa, Masahiro Shinoda, Kaneto Shindo, the great admirers of his work. Shindo did a documentary on him, wrote a book on him. And nearer home, we must not fail to mention our very own Ritik Ghatak's enthusiasm for Mizuguchi. While teaching at the Film Institute or talking to film club enthusiasts, Ghatak always made it a point 
to tell his listeners to go and see Mizoguchi. And in the Western world, it is difficult to find a greater admirer of Mizoguchi than the French maestro Goda. Along with him were others of the Cahiers group, notably Jacques Rivette, who made it a point to write pages on Mizoguchi. After a visit he made to Paris in 1953. Tarkovsky, Pasolini, Orson Welles, Theo Angelopoulos, all were convinced of the greatness of Mizoguchi's art and aesthetics. Speaking of Ugetsu Monogatari in particular, Goda is on record that the film's maturity, its purity, beauty, and its mysteriousness blend with such harmony as to make Mizuguchi the equal of Griffith, Eisenstein, and Jean Renoir. Thank you.